Okay, as per the title of the video, here's a question that I've had mulling around in my head for several years. So, let's see what you think about my answer, my reasoning, or have you got an opinion of your own? Then I would like to hear all about it in the comments. For many months of the year, winter resting dendrobiums look like something that does not have the appearance of being alive. Being deciduous, they lose their leaves and go into resting mode. In some climates, they may not lose their leaves, but more often than not, they do. And then, the first signs of activity become noticeable when the bare canes start to crack at the nodes, which is what we are all waiting for. These tentative signs of something happening, a clear sign of life, means that a bloom spectacle is in the early stages of happening but all my deciduous dendrobium blooms are very short-lived and the question i have been contemplating for quite some time now <laughs> is why and for some reason the other day it kind of clicked so here we are with a video you see no matter how you care for your resting dendrobiums during the resting phase, the fact that the orchid just doesn't look the part, those of us that grow these kinds of dendrobiums know what is going to happen once the canes start cracking at the nodes, and suddenly a bare cane is nothing short of beautiful, and it brings out that excitement of yay, <laughs> a spectacle is in our future. But unfortunately, this spectacle is relatively short-lived compared to other dendrobiums, and I have always wondered why. Have you? Has it ever crossed your mind as to why some winter-resting dendrobiums hold on to their blooms for more than a month, and they are super fragrant as well, for the most part, and then there are the likes of the Anosmum, Aphyllum, Bensonie, and Polyanthum, which I can make reference to because I grow those, why is the bloom spectacle short-lived on those dendrobiums compared to the nobilies or other resting dendrobiums that I do not have? Or even the dendrobium tortile? I would love to hear your opinion in the comments if you have a different answer to mine. So here is why I believe the blooming duration of deciduous dendrobiums is short-lived compared to other winter resters. The clue is in the classification of the short-lived bloom duration dendrobiums because those dendrobiums are deciduous. They do not have leaves to help them photosynthesize and producing blooms takes up an enormous amount of energy, which the orchid takes from the canes. However, there is only so much a cane can do to support a spectacle because in comparison to the thickness of the length of the canes, there are so many blooms to support, as well as in some cases, a strong fragrance to boot. If you've just had a light bulb moment and what I believe the answer is, give this video a like, share it around and subscribe to the channel because even though I have had many years of growing orchids, I still ask myself some questions that may not be of any fundamental importance, but interesting nonetheless, maybe. So, as I can figure out some sense of my not-so-important questions, I will bring the answers to you once they come to me. And I love bouncing these kinds of ideas around with you. The more, the merrier. Like the video, share it around, and subscribe. Thank you. Before I go off on a tangent alert, here's another question I've asked myself. Can we extend the bloom duration of these kinds of dendrobiums? maybe providing more fertilizer to the orchid while in the process of getting ready to bloom as a form of backup support. That did not result in a longer bloom duration for my deciduous dendrobiums. I tried that in 2022. When my pathetic little anosmum did bloom back in 2021, they only lasted two and a half weeks. My aphyllum bloom still only lasted two and a half weeks. My bensonia looked pristine for two and a half weeks, but their wilting takes longer than the aphyllum, so the impression of having a longer bloom duration is a little misleading. And the polyanthum also has a bloom duration of two and a half weeks, in which the blooms are gorgeous and look perfect, after which they start to wilt and look off-white, losing their pixie dust and sparkle. My anosmum did not bloom but that orchid has not performed for me since I got it in 2018, 
The self-watering setup is a last-ditch effort to see if it will start growing according to what it is actually capable of. But an Osman blooms are also very short-lived. While I did have some blooms, they also only lasted two and a half weeks. But my goodness, the fragrance I got to experience out of this pathetic blooming was insanely gorgeous, so I will keep trying until the orchid decides to call it a day and follows the path that many orchids in this same order went down. So if providing fertilizer, as our bearcane dendrobiums are pushing the nubbins, are pushing spikes, giving them a little bit of support while they're doing that with fertilizer, if that didn't work, what about higher humidity? I thought about that, but no. When my dendrobiums bloom, the temperatures are not that hot and the air is not as dry as it can get the further into summer we go. So what do you think? Those of you that have these kinds of dendrobiums in a humid climate, does growing these orchids in higher humidity extend the bloom duration? Let me know in the comments. Now, here is the comparison we have winter resting dendrobiums like the nobly types. They hold on to their leaves and have a mass blooming early spring with intense fragrances as well. The bloom duration lasts well over a month and in my opinion that is because of the fact that they have leaves to support with the energy supply. Same with my Dendrobium tortile. Even though it is a winter rester and it is deciduous, the previous year's canes hold on to their leaves and only after two years does the orchid lose a few leaves here and there, but when she blooms, spectacularly her blooms last well into a full month if not a tad more and she has a delightful rose fragrance as well and as the rule of thumb with orchids go it wouldn't be a video without exceptions because the orchid hobby is full of exceptions a winter rester of sorts is dendrobium krista erdman holds on to the leaves and the bloom duration is less than two weeks <laughs> i know I don't mean to topple the apple cart, but there is a clear difference for the most part in the comparison of the bloom duration of winter resting dendrobiums that are deciduous. The lack of leaves results in a shorter bloom lifespan. As some of us are seeing the canes on our deciduous dens crack, I thought I would answer the question for myself in a video and see if anyone has any other reasons as to why deciduous dendrobium blooms are so short lived. And I would like to hear from anyone that has their deciduous dendrobiums hold on to leaves and still bloom out. Do your blooms last longer than two and a half weeks? I am super interested in your observations. Last year I had a film Cakey's bloom. The Cakey's never lost their leaves because I was caring for them inside and it almost felt as though the blooms lasted longer. I could be wrong. If they did, then maybe three weeks as opposed to two and a half weeks. But all y'all growing these deciduous winter resting dendrobiums in a climate with high humidity, let me know your observations about how long do your blooms last if your dendrobiums hold on to the leaves. And just a heads up, be careful with your deciduous dendrobium canes once the cracks start to show nubbins. The spectacle is coming, the anticipation is building as well, well, at least mine. <laughs> and with that, there is room for disappointment. Protect your canes from bashing up against each other as best as possible because while the spikes start to push from the nodes, they are fragile, they pop off easily, and any abrasions of the canes, be it due to wind or us brushing up against them, will take off spikes resulting in less bloom. So I hope that if you grow deciduous dendrobiums and if you're in the hemisphere which is heading into spring, that you are also enjoying the anticipation and hopefully will avoid any disappointment. Personally, I am safeguarding any disappointment. I have tied the gate that holds the aphyllum mount to the pillar so that the strong wind does not slam it around. What I cannot avoid is the canes rubbing up against each other. The way things look right now, I feel as though they are well separated for spikes to form without any issues. But time will tell as the spring winds increase in intensity, then I will have to reevaluate, maybe do a fishing line grid of sorts to keep the canes away from each other. <laughs> oh, that would be a first. But there's always a first for everything. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> I really want my aphyllum to go from Medusa to Bayetha, so 
we'll see how things goes as the spikes progress. It is early days at this moment. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that there was a little food for thought in this video and that it made you think about something that you hadn't thought of before. I so appreciate your time. Thank you. Wishing you a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.